Seattle, Washington, Bertha, the world's largest TBM, is repaired and ready to begin boring beneath the streets of the city once again. Earlier this year, the 2,000-ton cutter head was brought to the surface for repairs. TBM maker Hitachi Zosen manufactured a new bearing block, an outer seal ring. The cutter head and drive unit was reattached to the TBM in November, followed by no-load testing of the machine. Then, the shaft was backfilled and excavation resumed. The last time that Seattle Tunnel Partners modified their schedule for the restart of the machine, they had listed December as a month where they would be doing the testing of the machine with uh, the plan to be able to resume mining by the end of the month. Within that testing, they uh, also communicated to us that moving forward with some mining distance within the access pit would be part of the load test plan. So earlier this week, they were able to mine forward eight feet. That was roughly about two feet so they could complete what was called ring 159, which was previously partially mined, and then mine the six and a half feet for a complete ring of ring number 160. Again, this is a considered part of the testing of the machine. It uh, did answer some questions, and there is a lot more still to go as far as testing as this machine breaks out of the shaft and makes its way to Safe Haven 3. This is a milestone for STP to demonstrate that uh, they have the machine ready to go to complete the requirement for building this tunnel. No, the machine's basically uh, the same as it was before. We replaced the damaged parts. Um, we uh, added some uh, ports for conditioning the soil, and we uh, removed the feature that allows for the axial displacement of the cutter head to move the cutter head horizontally in and out. We've got that fixed and, and welded to the machine now, the, the housing for that. Um, so that's, that's a feature that's been removed that we won't have going forward for the balance of the tunnel drive. But basically it, it's, it's the same machine that we had before and it's operated in the same manner that it was operated before. Last week we uh, completed the uh, backfilling of the shaft with the uh, sand and some soil in front of the TBM up to about four feet above the TBM. This weekend we went ahead and uh, we placed what we call control density fill. That's a layer of uh, material that's a mixture of cement and sand uh, above the, the sand that we'd placed in the shaft to uh, form a cap over the backfill in the shaft. When we mine with the TBM, we need to introduce pressure into the plenum. We need to be able to hold that pressure. The ground that's above us needs to be able to withstand that pressure to keep any of that uh, air escaping to the surface. So we went with the control density fill to make sure that uh, we had the, the cap that we needed to start up the TBM and uh, pressurize uh, the plenum behind the cutter head. We started mining the balance of what we call ring 159. We had 1.64 feet to go and then the next step as you know once we stop mining is to build the next ring so we built ring 159. Once that ring was built we were ready to start mining ring 160 and then we started mining ring 161. The plan is when we come back on the 4th of January, we'll complete the mining of Ring 161, and while we're doing that, we'll continue the same load tests that we did while we were ringing, mining Ring 159 and Ring 160. Yesterday, we were monitoring all the TBM performance data very carefully. Everything's performing exactly as it should. All the temperatures are fine. All the forces are fine and uh, we're very, very pleased with how the TBM performed. Now that the machine's been repaired, we're going to proceed very slowly out of the access shaft and we'll gradually increase the production as we move up Alaskan Way to uh, Safe Haven 3, where we plan on being sometime towards the end of January. We'll stop there for a period of a couple weeks uh, do maintenance on a TBM. We're also going to add length to the conveyor belt so that we can tunnel for the next thousand feet or so without stopping and adding conveyor belt. And once that's complete uh, during February, then we'll start to uh, tunnel away from Safe Haven 3 and go underneath the viaduct in March. Yeah, at this, at this point we're anticipating doing approximately two week closure as STP does mine under the viaduct. The reason for that is purely precautionary. There's gonna be a lot of monitoring going on to make sure that nothing does go wrong. 
that monitoring is uh, easier to read and to quickly interpret without the vibration and the noise that comes from traffic. And if there is something that does need to be done as far as grouting to fill in a void, it could be easier to do that quickly without traffic on the viaduct. So it's a purely precautionary move. move. And again, recall STP, as part of the contract, knows that they had to strengthen the viaduct in a way to be able to go underneath it and not damage the viaduct. We're not planning on it getting stuck under the viaduct, but uh, if, if something happened and we need to do some repairs, well, we, we can do whatever we need to do from within the tunnel. Yeah, we're confident that there's no other objects out there in front of us. We've got locations established all the way along the balance of the tunnel drive where we'll stop every few hundred feet, stop for a day or up to a week, do an intervention, check everything on the cutter head, the cutting tools, all the ports for the soil conditioning, and then go ahead and, and drive the next section of tunnel. We've got about 8,000 feet to go, so um, and we've got 50 weeks in the year, so if, that's 160 feet per week. If we're going five days per week, that's 30 odd feet per day that we have to hit as an overall average to complete the tunnel drive in 2016. When we um, mined into the access pit, we were going about uh, one foot per hour, so it's taking about six hours to go the six and a half feet. Normally we can mine the six and a half feet in something less than an hour, build a ring in less than an hour. So there's, there's a big variable of time there with respect to how quickly you can mine a ring or how long you might take to mine a ring. In Seattle, Washington, Sterling Noreen for Tunnel Talk.